The Fallen Wall Science Breakthrough of the Year 2023 in Physical Sciences. Breaking the wall to quantum magnets. How a new type of magnetism can lead to lossless electronics. Libor Schmeichel, Johannes Gutenberg University, Mainz. On November 9th, 1989, I happened to be one year old in Czechoslovakia, where the Velvet Revolution was about to start in eight days. Good morning. It's a really great honor for me to be here. I'm coming from Czechoslovakia, and the fall of the Berlin Wall had a huge impact on our country in 1989, because just few days after the fall, we had our own revolution, and it was actually a very peaceful revolution. It was a very peaceful revolution. Uh, nobody was hurt, and uh, I would like now to take you together on a journey back to childhood and going back to imagine the first time when you encountered magnets. They are somehow mysterious, right? Because you can feel them, but you don't see what is causing this attraction or repulsion among themselves. Now, today, I will try to show you how we came further with the exploration of the magnets and how we actually figured it out that contrary to conventional textbooks, there are in nature not two types of magnets, but actually three. And the third new type of magnetism can be very useful for future electronics and information technologies. So let me start with our childish picture of magnets. So as children, for us, it's just a piece of iron which we can stick on a fridge. In school, we learn that it has a north pole, it has a south pole, and it has some magnetic field around. Now, when we are growing older, we learn about the atomic structure, and we learn that the atoms itself in these ferromagnets are actually having tiny magnetizations itself. So they have also north and south poles. And then eventually, when we study physics at university, we learn that the works of Curie and Heisenberg open our understanding from the perspective of quantum mechanics, and we can imagine these magnets as tiny arrows, composed of many, many uh, tiny arrows. And then I can take the magnets I have here, and I can actually, just by rotating them, influence the order in this ferromagnet, so we can control them. Now, to make them useful, because they have these magnetic, tiny magnetic moments, we can try to run electric currents through them. And in conventional electronics, we are using just the charge of the electron. And that leads to a lot of dissipation of energy. However, electron has fortunately another property. Electron itself is actually a tiny magnet. So it has something, what is called spin, it can take only two values, either spin up or spin down. It's super exciting and prospective for applications because it's much easier, in principle, to lose less energy to move such a spins. However, at the same time, it's very difficult to generate these spins in materials because common materials, electrons are coming in pairs there with spin up and down, and so these spins are cancelling out. Fortunately, in the conventional ferromagnets, which I was just explaining you from the childhood, uh, people were able to build these trilayers where they could control the mutual orientations of the two ferromagnetic layers, and this would change the electric resistivity. So we could actually use this in hard drives, in magnetic hard drives, to encode information, to encode the logical zeros and ones. Unfortunately, the magnetic magnetization itself, which we are using for this application, is an enemy, because it's constraining the speed, and it makes it difficult to make this smaller, faster, and also more energy efficient. So these applications are still very promising, but we could try to find other materials where they will be even better. Now for that, 
we can turn our attention to the second class of magnets, which were invented only 90 years ago by Louis Nell. And in these magnets, the atomic moments are on the adjacent atoms oriented not parallel, like in ferromagnets, but instead anti-parallel. So the total magnetization is zero because it compensates. So we are not producing these unwanted magnetic fields, and that's great. However, it turns out that it's very difficult to read information from such a systems because the great property of being compensated is make at the same time very difficult to make them functional. So, Nell even himself mentioned that they are super interesting, but they are perhaps useless. Fortunately, about a decade ago, uh, my mentors like Professor Tomasz Jungwert, Jairo Sinova, and many others, they were thinking like, okay, wait a minute, maybe there are ways how to make them useful. And this brought us 10 years ago to think about the question whether we can somehow combine the benefits of the ferromagnets and antiferromagnets in a single, even more magical magnet. So, our solution to this problem turned out to be very simple. If we decorate the antiferromagnets with non-magnetic atoms in very special way, it turns out that the central magnet will have the properties which we are searching for. And in the remaining of the talk, I will try to explain you how. So, let me go now to a little bit to quantum mechanics, because it turns out that these tiny arrows around the atoms are actually in reality distributions, quantum mechanical distributions. So in ferromagnets and antiferromagnets, these distributions are spherical, like soccer ball. And in antiferromagnet, you just shift them by the lattice, and you change the color, and you obtain the antiferromagnetic matter. Now, in the new class, actually, they are more funny. These distributions are looking more like dumbbells. So they are more anisotropic, and this is now generating a lot of interesting properties, because now, when I want to go to the opposite sublattice, I need to now not translate, but rotate. So I rotate, and I have this uh, alter magnetic system in the middle. Now, mathematically, it turns out that these are three distinct classes. So let's now look into the real materials in nature, how abundant they are. Because usually, when there is some new great matter, we are very happy to have just one. Well, it turns out that just in the last few years, we found more than 220 outer magnetic materials. And the great thing is that they range from insulators, metals, to even superconductors. So this is opening entirely new era of opportunities for researching magnetic quantum matter. Now, in the second half of the talk, I would like to focus on one particular field, which we are excited about. And that's the field of electronics. So let me try to explain you now by comparing with the conventional non-magnetic and magnetic systems what is so exciting about this new category of magnets. So as I told you, when we look into the materials, they have electrons which are coming in pairs with the spin up and down, exactly cancelling each other. So they are a little bit like these two black swans. They are coming all the time together, they are smoothly flowing through the material, however, they are cancelling the effects we want. Now, if we don't have a single atom, these quantum mechanical discrete energy levels start to change into something what we call energy bands. So we have now more electrons, and from such a diagrams, we can understand how electrons will be moving in this material. So, now I have my non-magnetic material, that's virtually any material around us, and we have our spins coming in pairs. They are dancing together. Now, when I run an electric field through such a material, that means I cannot use it for the applications. The only way how people found out to make this useful is by using heavy elements, using Einstein's relativity in these materials, but then still 
the splitting and the separation will be very tiny. So, that's why people turn their attention to the next class of the ferromagnets I told you about before, which we use in the magnetic hard drives, because there you can separate the electrons which spin up and down very strongly, so strongly that actually you will end up with having just one. The other one is completely suppressed. So that's great. We have now the functionalities. We can do something for the applications. However, as I have told you, we are still limited because these magnets are very difficult to scale and are also energy inefficient. So, now, when I go to the second class, which we know for the 90 years, to the antiferromagnets, we are coming back to the situation of cancelling out the spin up and down. So I have in this class, again, both of my, uh, of my electrons, both electrons which spin up and down, and uh, they, these electrons, should be now dancing together. So you can see that they are now in such a magnetic system actually even more entangled than in the non-magnetic system because the local magnetic fields in the antiferromagnet are making them to really stick together. So this is making them really difficult to functionalize them and to use them for electronics. Again, if we want to do something with them, the tricks which people found out were based on the Einstein's theory of relativity with toxic, rare and not sustainable materials. So, let's now go to the last category and let's go into the category of alter magnets. So in alter, alter magnets, the fantastic thing is that because we have these rotations among the opposite spin sublattices, we can now actually separate the electron spins in the space. So the electron spins are now propagating through the material in two different directions as these uh, two swans. So since we are able to separate them, we are able to introduce entirely new functionalities and on top of it, this is now not only theoretical prediction computed on supercomputers, but it is actually in collaboration with our Swiss colleagues, reality. Because I'm showing you here the beautiful correspondence among the theoretical prediction and the experimental observation of the separation of the spin up and down in an outer magnetic material. On top of it, these fields which are separating the spin up and spin down are 100,000 times stronger than the magnetic fields which we all know from the fridge magnets. Okay, so this brings me to the last few notes on how can be now the super exciting magnets useful for information technologies. So let me start with trying to build magnetic memory based on outer magnets. So now we have a similar situation like in the beginning where we had two ferromagnetic layers separated by a tunneling barrier. Now, instead, we have two outer magnetic layers and we have still quantum tunneling and because, as you can see, the opposite spin sublattices in both of the layers are overlapping in this direction, it's easy for the electrons to tunnel very efficiently through such a system. Now, when we reorient the spin polarization of one of the layers, we see that now the electron with spin up should tunnel into state with spin down. And that's something what nature doesn't like. So that means that here we have a suppression of the tunneling. And that means that we are now able to really have a large signals how to read logical zero and ones. And on top of it, we can in principle switch such a memory three orders of magnitude faster than the conventional ones which we have in our computers. So, it turns out that there is even more exciting possibility opened by outer magnets. And this possibility is coming from having now this realistic picture of one particular outer magnetic material. So you see that again, we have this dumbbell-like shape magnetic sublattices. And now, when we apply electric field to this system, we have actually dissipationless transverse component 
of these electrons. So there is a part of the electron which is moving without dissipation, and this opens new possibilities for research and possible applications. So with this, let me summarize that we have actually, by using uh, quantum mechanics, identified new class of magnets which are behaving like these two dancing swans. And this is opening the possibility to solving some problems in society as well. One particular problem is that the data and information which is flowing all around us and is the fuel of our society is consuming too much of electricity. It's projected that it can be almost 50%. With our magnets, <coughs> we could solve this. Thank you for your attention.